Greetings and salutations, all you folks out there. I'm Brink, and you're listening to the Voice of Insanity, bringing you an opinion about a video game. Today, we're going to be talking about Toy Soldiers War Chest for the PC. Let's take a look at the video game trailers and see what we're going to be playing with today. On the face of it, this looks like an awesome game. You've got explosions, you've got huge battles. This game is a mix of tower defense and third person action blended into one experience. You can look at the trailers and see that they're also offering extra heroes. You've got Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, Cobra Commander, Assassin's Creed, all available. Talk about an eclectic group of fanboys purchasing this game. All of this stuff should come together into a pretty polished experience. And I gotta say, I love console, tower defense, and strategy games. Now Brink, you must be saying, you're crazy! How could you possibly like console strategy games when PC is so much better? I'm not gonna argue with you, PC is definitely better, but I am gonna say I'm not crazy, I am certifiably insane because I love console tower defense. The user interface is so cool to me with the circular UI, all of that is very easy to use. I even like the RTSs, started way back on the GameCube with Army Men RTS, moved all the way up through Xbox, Xbox 360, playing games. All of the tower defense games that were available, I pretty much had most of them. And then the Halo Wars, Supreme Commander 2, that kind of strategy game, picked up those and played those as well. Now, looking at this game as a whole, judging strictly on the content, let's talk about what this game offers. I don't think it quite makes the cut. This game tries to mix tower defense and third person and one plus one does not equal two. You end up with a empty grid, there's not enough places to put towers, all of the units come in in straight lines, there's no way to affect the flow of the units, there's just not enough in the strategic zoom feature to keep you occupied, which you might say is, oh, that makes sense because you're supposed to use the third person combat as well. Well, when you zoom down into third person combat, it's just incredibly repetitive. There's no added features, there's rarely secondary weapons, you end up flitting back and forth between your miscellaneous turrets trying to get within reach of the units that are coming in. There's totally broken portions of the map where you can't even shoot from certain spots because there's immovable objects that you can't penetrate in between you and where the units are going in. It, it's just not really well put together at all, and neither option offers you enough content to actually fill your time while you're playing this game. It feels like both of them are half-baked when you should have been able to take, you know, offer three quarters of the game in one and three quarters of the game in the other, so you could take your pick and interact with the other half just a little bit. You've also got the third person heroes, which are so underpowered in my experience that I never really use them that much. There's a cool mix of them. I mean, you've got flying hawks that drop flaming boulders on your enemies. You've got tanks, you've got unicorns that fly around farting rainbows. I'm actually not kidding about that. It, it's really an interesting concept. It just doesn't work very well. And you know, that's pretty much all the game has to offer right there. There's a ton of story missions. If you're going strictly by content, then yeah, there you can fill a lot of gaming hours, but it's gonna be a lot of boring gaming hours. Now, let's talk about the PC version specifically, which is the one that I played. This is an utterly and completely broken mess of a game. I don't know why anyone would buy this. I'm just gonna go right out there and say it, do not by this game. The user interface was ripped directly from the console. I know it's a port, but the least you can do is give yourself a better user interface for the PC version. Nope, the axis from the thumbstick is directly tied to the axis on the mouse. When you're trying to navigate in the menus, it sticks all over the place. It's hard to back out of things. You end up clicking things accidentally all the time. The A and B buttons are hardwired to the left and right mouse clicks. So to enter menus and exit menus, you left click and right click and you must right click because if you left click even when you're not on a build selection it clicks anyway because that was the last place that your thumbstick quote unquote was directed to and it's stuck there the whole thing is incredibly annoying and the ui fights against you at every turn to the point that i spent the first 20 or 25 minutes simply learning how to work around the user interface to actually play the game and you might say well then just plug in a gamepad well yeah, that's not as broken, but I just went back to the mouse and keyboard because it wasn't really worth playing on my PC gamepad. It just, it, it doesn't work. 
Now, UI aside, all of the controls for the game as well are completely and totally screwed because it's all based off of the controller. All they did was tie the axis into the mouse. It's not a smooth transition. So I had to turn the sensitivity all the way down on the mouse because moving the mouse when you're in the third person perspective just violently twitched all over the place. And even with the sensitivity all the way down, there were problems because it breaks your mouse movement. If you move your mouse faster, your turret actually rotates slower, which is one of the most aggravating gaming experiences I have ever had ever over years of gaming. It's like to make the turret even usable, I had to put the brakes on and then I can't even turn around to shoot what's behind me. To pretty much sum it up, let me show you this little clip. This is me trying to take control of one of the flying heroes in this game. I will remind you that this is with the lowest mount sensitivity. I took off and here's what happened. Yeah, that's it. That is what you get when you try to use a flying hero. I, I don't understand how this game even made it onto the Steam client in this condition. It is so completely and utterly broken, messed up, unusable, unplayable that I, I don't even know. I, I don't know how they haven't pulled this title, how people aren't refunding all over the place because it's just... It's unplayable with a mouse and keyboard, and it's not very fun on the gamepad. That's pretty much all I have to say about this game, except for the last point, which is pricing. Let's remember everything I said over the last seven minutes about how bland, boring, lacking content, broken, glitchy, terrible this game is. They're charging $15 at the door for the base version of the game. On top of that, to get any of the big factions that were advertised, I, I know that they advertised it, it was pretty clear that it was a DLC, but they're charging $5 per faction, $15 for all four to get G.I. Joe, Cobra, Masters of the Universe, and Assassin's Creed. That means you've dumped $30 into this flaming turd of a release to get all of the content for it when I would say you might maybe be getting your money's worth out of it if you bought it on sale for the entire package for $5. And even that's pushing it because it's so broken it shouldn't be on the market in the first place. That's my opinion on this game. I am sticking to it. As always, thank you so much for watching this video. Like it if you liked it. Thumbs down if you disliked it. I do appreciate your feedback in the comments. I'm new to this whole game reviewing thing, so I want to hear your constructive criticism on what you would like to see changed. And I will see you guys in the next video. Adios.